What's up, super people? My name is Aaron Oster, and this is the second time I'm recording this because I accidentally hit the stop button when I was trying to turn around. If you've seen me cheering uh, every single time I hit the uh, button on my phone and it flips around the camera, <laughs> this is why. Um, anyway, I'm a number one best-selling author on Amazon, and today I'm finally going to do something that you guys have been asking for, and I'm doing a video on how I outline a book, my entire process, and um, I did this video a little bit differently. Um, so if you like the way this looks, uh, let me know down in the comments. Also, please destroy that like button and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And with that said, let's get right into it. So we have turned around. Man, I'm so happy I got that right this time. Okay, so we're going to be talking about proper outlining. And I'm going to be doing it step by step. I've got it all written out here so I won't uh, fumble in what I'm trying to say. So here we go. We're going to start off with uh, the first part of proper outlining, and that is the idea. You obviously can't start a story without having an idea of what you want to write about. Uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of important. You need to know what you want to write about before you can even start outlining. So idea, very important to have. So here we go. We're going to give you some examples here. A fantasy story. People who get superpowers by drinking milk, race cars who have problems with emotional connections, a hermit who never leaves his cave and doesn't have any... Oh, wait. Okay, I ignore that last one. <laughs> Thought I'd be funny there. I, I don't know how funny that came up. All right, number two, main characters. Yes, you will want to do your main characters right away. As soon as you've gotten your idea, pick your main character. Uh, choosing your protagonist is important as it will determine whether people will actually read your book make them relatable, but not too much like an order, ordinary person, because remember, they are special. <laughs> uh, we're going to be using the all-too-often-used protagonist man with tragic backstory. So, um, yeah. Um, now, by the way, you can also, uh, when you get to this point, you can also choose your villains and supporting characters. Now, when I see your main character, what you want to do is pick his backstory, his or her backstory, um, what makes them who they are, their personality traits... Um, etc. Because uh, picking your protagonist now is important because you don't want to make them, um, you don't want to make them a certain way. And uh, here we go. We'll, we'll go on to number three right over here. So, yes, you want to choose your character before the world. Excuse me. This way you can have the character you want and not have to rework them to make them fit the narrative, right? Because if you have a main character that, um, I, I don't know, likes uh, likes driving fast cars, uh, but then you decide you're going to do a fantasy world um, that doesn't really have technology in it, you're going to have a bit of a problem over there. <laughs> yeah, an extreme case over there, but like I'm saying, main character first, then world. Pick your world before, this way you don't have to change anything in your main character. Uh, sorry, pick your world after. <laughs> uh, before you can come up with an actual story, you need to pick your setting. Doing so will make the rest of the steps that much easier. Yes, picking the world that you are going to uh, be using for your story is very important. So, protagonist men will live on a carbon copy of Earth. Yeah, very original, but in medieval times with magic. Ooh, yeah, super exciting. I would definitely read that. Uh, this is this is very tropey, very over-exaggerated. And I'm not slamming you if this is what you pick. A lot of people do this, but just, you know... Make it interesting, and don't call your character protagonist, man, unless you're writing satire. Anyway, moving on to step number four, the rules uh, and slash magic system, right? So, uh, yeah, we're on to the fun stuff now. Uh, pick the rules of your world and make sure you like them, because changing them mid-story will make your readers very mad. And yes, I do have personal experience with this. Back when I was first getting started writing, I would change rules left and right because I didn't like how they fit the narrative. So this is why outlining is very important. Sticking to your rules is very important. Um, choosing your type of magic system here will also help. Whether you want a hard magic system with rigid rules or a soft magic system where you can play around and have fun. So... A uh, rigid magic system is like, uh, you know, of course, yeah, right? If you don't have magic, you can just skip that part. But the rule thing is still important. An example in this world, people can gain magic by eating mud. Okay? <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is where you can also uh, pick your protagonist's specific powers if they apply. Um, so, I mean, examples of how you can make eating mud a soft or hard magic system, right? Um, here we go. You eat mud, right? Hard magic system. Um, depending on the amount of mud you eat, 
that's how much stronger you will become. So if you eat a bowl full of mud, you're going to be this strong. If you eat a, you know, house-sized brick of mud, then you're going to be even stronger. Hard magic system. On the other hand, soft magic system, um, you can gain powers by eating mud, but if you eat different types of mud with different minerals in them, you can have different effects to varying degrees of strength. So yes, you can get a lot more detailed in either one, but generally it's easier to write a hard magic system, but more fun to write a soft magic system. Anyway, moving on. Number five. Didn't do your supporting characters and villains before? Now's your chance. That's literally it for number five. All right, number six. Outline part one. Now that you've finished all the boring stuff, you can keep going. <laughs> so, part one of the outline is to write down bullet points of major events happening in your story, right? So here you can see I've got some examples. Protagonist man's family dies. Protagonist man swears vengeance and leaves his home forever. Protagonist man eats dirt and gains magic, etc. All right, so here you can see um, this is just a bare bones outline of the major plot points that are going to be happening in your story. You know, from here on, you can keep going. You know, protagonist man meets other protagonists, uh, probably protagonist woman, if I'm the one writing it. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. Bare bones outline right over here, which is outline part one, which will make outline part two much easier to do if you just have the um, bullet points of the major events that are going to be happening in your story. Now remember, if you do everything in order, things are going to be much easier. If you start writing things out of order, it will take time, it will take more effort. The, the whole point of me writing it this way is to make um, the writing flow as efficient and... Um, you know, take as little time as possible uh, so you don't have to go back changing things in the end. All right, so here we go. Outline part two. So this is where you write your main outline, which will which you will use to tell your whole story. You can elaborate on the bullet points, and four to five pages should be enough, right? So on the uh, bullet point of protagonist man's family dies, we, uh, you know, we got a, you know, so-so, you know, quote-unquote. You can be more detailed than this, but... I'm not going to write out an entire paragraph for this, right? Protagonist man has a happy life. He lived with victim parents and victim younger sister. He was going to be married to victim wife. On the night of his wedding, they all go bye-bye, leaving protagonist man very upset. And yeah, this leads into the next one. Protagonist man swears vengeance and leaves forever. You get the point. Um, just to be clear, this is uh, exactly what I do in uh, Rampage, the first book in Land of the Elementals, right? This is literally... <laughs> If you want to strip it down to the bare bones, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the bare bones lines, this is pretty much the first four or five chapters of my book, Rampage. Um, so this is kind of what I took it from, right? You, you can elaborate over here more, talk about more, you know, talk more about victim parents and more about victim younger sister because you always want a younger sister in there because younger brothers just, uh, it hits harder if it's a girl for some reason. Um, and of course, you got you got to get rid of the victim wife because we need to make room for female protagonist. Um, <laughs> um, okay, and uh, here we are, number eight. Destroy the like button and subscribe. What? How did that get in here? I, I don't know. I don't think that's part of the writing process, but, you know, why not now that you're here? Um, and getting to the end of here, following the outline is only a suggestion, so feel free to change it up if it feels right because that's something that I always do. Now, um, if you like that, I mean, I hope I didn't speed through it too quickly. Yes, it was kind of bare bones. It didn't give you, like, huge, like, pages upon pages of text on what to do. But, I mean, look at that. That is literally what I do um, to get my workflow. It's how I stop myself from writing myself into a corner and not knowing what to do next. And then having to backtrack and try and fix this is how I get my workflow to be the most efficient, save myself the most time, and get through my story in a timely manner. This is how I managed to publish 13 books last year. Uh, yeah, over 1.6 million words were written. So, yeah, I realize that you got to be, you know, committed, kind of doing this full time, and, uh, you know, <laughs> be willing to sacrifice your hands uh, to an extent. You know, it's important to be careful with your hands. Wrap them, go see your doctor if uh, it starts to hurt. That out of the way, we're, we're talking about outlining here. So that's pretty much the uh, basics, um, the formula that I use every single time I write a book. This is my process, right? 
Uh, when you're writing a book two, book three, book four, things get much easier because you already have the world outlined. You already have most of the characters outlined. All you really got to do is pick the storyline, the continuation, add new characters and villains. But I mean, the magic system isn't really changing. You're just evolving your main characters as they go. Um, you're pushing the narrative along. So yes, when coming up with the initial first book, that will have to be the that will be literally the most work you do outlining a book for a new series. Um, so with all that said, um, I hope you guys got some uh, something out of this. I hope you appreciate it. I hope you liked it. If you did, destroy that like button. I would really appreciate it if you subscribed as well. Um, if you like this style of video, let me know down in the comments. It took me a little bit longer to set this one up because I obviously had to type that out. Uh, so if you liked it, let me know. And uh, if you destroy that like button, it will also um, make me very happy. You can grab all my stuff down there. Uh, links in the description to all my books and audiobooks. If you're looking for a cover artist, Mibble Art will be giving you 15% off or adding $15 of value to your cover when you say I recommended you. They do great stuff. They got a whole bunch of author resources. Check them out. We can both get a little credit over there if you do that. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep being super. Age of Ancients goes up for pre-order January 22nd and comes out January 27th. I'm very excited about this. I'll talk about it more in later videos. Keep being super. I will see you all next time.